Let's look at this. I don't know if you can really tell, but, but the wind is blowing like 40. Yeah, like 40, okay? So the plan was today was to go fishing because that's what we do. But plans always change because when it's 40 miles an hour on Lake Okeechobee, you have to kind of uh, regroup a little bit. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking today, let's install this power pole charge right here. And I'm gonna tell you all about this thing. This is a new product. And I bet most of you guys watching have no idea what the power pole charge is. Okay, so I'll get into that in just a minute. It's really cool stuff, cutting edge technology. Number two, I thought, you know, how can we make this video a little more interesting other than just installing a power pole charge? So I put a uh, question on my Instagram and we will be answering questions that you guys dropped on my Instagram. So if you don't follow my Instagram, be sure to follow it. Scott Martin Challenge, pretty simple. And uh, so we're gonna be answering some questions along the way, but I'm gonna install this. Yeah, I, I actually know how to install stuff, believe it or not. I actually rigged out all, check out this real quick. Rigged out all my electronics here just recently. Did this yesterday, actually. Got that finished up. Garmin 8612s. So here on the front, I've got my 8612 and an 8610 on the front, Panoptics on the trolling motor, brand new Force Garmin trolling motor. But this video is not all about a boat reveal or check out my new boat. It's about hanging out with you guys, answering a few questions and uh, installing this thing. So I wanna show you all about it. It's really cool and you need to check out the power pole charge. And I'm sure you're gonna want one after I explain to you all the cool things. All right, there she is right there, power pole charge. You know what it is? It's basically a charger for your boat. That's right, it is a charger. Okay, but it's not just any charger. This is the power pole charge. Let me tell you something about power pole. John Oliverio, the owner of power pole, he's not only a genius, he's got a bunch of geniuses that work for him. So he developed this brand new charger that goes in your boat and it's smart. It's like really smart. It's way smarter than any charger ever built because it can actually charge 36 volt lithiums, which is what we're going to do. And it will also charge your 12 volt cranking batteries. And then you can kind of switch things around too. And it will actually jump to your weakest battery from your weakest battery. Anyways, you know what I'm saying. Think smart, okay? So let's install this thing right here. I don't know really what to expect, but let's try it. Let's give it a shot. All right, first thing is first. First, we have to uninstall the onboard charger that came with the Ranger. I only got it hooked up to two batteries now. My two lithium uh, trolling motor batteries are not hooked up to it. So I need to uninstall that, then figure out a great and secure place for the power pole charge which is most likely gonna be mounted in that same general area, but I need to mount that, secure that. That way when I run the wires, I can run the wires properly instead of hooking it up first, then trying to mount it. You wanna mount the charge first. All right, first thing is first, I'm going to uninstall this onboard charger. So basically they've got a, a lead to each one of the batteries. And on this boat here, I have two 12 volt cranking batteries and two 36 volt trolling motor batteries, lithium pros. So I'm gonna uninstall these real quick. I think the hardest part of this whole thing might be taking the old charger out, which is in hard. I literally just did that in a few few seconds there. Now I'm going to remove the charger itself. All right, there we go. We got the old one out and uninstalled. Put off, put that off to the side. And uh, you know, there's a used market for that. So you know, if you bought the power pole charge, you can obviously sell that. All right, so now we've got a good clean surface. Let's get this puppy mounted. Let's see what, I hope there's instructions in here. Look at that guys, beautiful, beautiful. There's the instructions. The one thing I'm noticing right off the bat, believe it or not, which, you know, won't make a huge difference, but this is much lighter than that. that. That is heavy. Let's figure out where we're going to mount this puppy. Looks like right here. Oh yeah. We can use one of the existing holes. Oh, that's perfect. Fit right there on that plate. I'm going to have to drill another hole. Oh yeah. So let's look at the configuration. We're going to do 12 volt, 12 volt to 36 volt. So I'm gonna take the main positive negative out of the charge into my main cranking battery. Main positive negative to the main cranking battery. All right, there's your wires right there. It's not, not too bad actually. So this is your main power wire. We're gonna run that up through the, the back of the boat in a minute. So we'll separate that. And here is our main, this is our main that's gonna go to our 
cranking battery and then these wires are going to go to my 36 volt system so pretty simple really all right so we basically got the positive and the negative off the main two wires off the charge and ran that wire up behind the boat and came out the back side of this battery. Now this is just a 12 volt lead right here. I've got the lithiums on the other side. I've already tightened that one down. So I've got the positive and the negative of the power pole charge right there. Now this is an extra battery that I have here. Um, I'm not really sure I'm gonna need this anymore. And I have a 12 volt lithium that I was gonna put right there. Uh, it's on its way, but this system might not need it. All right, next step, we did the 12 volt. We hooked the main positive and the negative up to that. Now the next thing is basically this second jump wire right here that has all these wires. We're gonna connect on the 36 volt system on one of my 36 volt lithiums because I've got them hooked uh, parallel. I am gonna hook the, connect the red, blue, and yellow cables to positive, okay? Let's do one at a time. Red, blue, and yellow to positive. Pretty simple, guys. There's red, blue, and yellow right there, okay? We're gonna hook that up on the positive side of my lithium 36 volt battery. We're gonna run it back here, run it back. And we want all these wires to be somewhat organized. What I'm probably gonna do to clean this up is zip tie these two mains over on this side. Again, red, yellow, and blue on the positive. And of course, that negative is going to go on the negative. Pretty, pretty easy to figure that part out. All right, so two things. One is we are going to get to those questions here in a minute. So for y'all that are hanging around waiting for me to answer these questions, they're coming real soon. So the other thing is I've been running lithium batteries basically for four years. I love them. They're super lightweight. You know, you've, you've, you've read a lot about lithium lately. A lot of people are switching over. There's a bunch of different companies popping up out of the woodwork, but Lithium Pros is the original lithium battery company out of Knoxville. Kevin Bennett and those guys, they do a really, really fine job with batteries. All American made batteries too, by the way. What's great about these lithium batteries right here is that this particular battery only weighs like 26, 27 pounds. And this one again is 26, 27. So I have two 36 volt systems. So I only need to use one battery most days, but if I'm hardcore sight fishing, like summertime, 14 hours a day, nonstop, you're gonna burn through a set of batteries. Everybody's gonna burn through any set of batteries on those long days like that. But I have them sitting here, I have them, have them hooked up together. So it's one big 36 volt battery and it's good. And that extra weight out of the back of your boat allows you to get on plane a little bit shallower because you don't have an extra 300 pounds of weight literally in the back of the boat. That's huge, especially down here in Lake Okeechobee. Lithium is the way to go, guys. So guys, we'll drop a link in the description down below for Lithium Pros. Check them out, again, American made cool people there. Be sure to let them know that uh, you came to their site or you called them because of me. It's awesome stuff. And we'll also drop a link in the description down below for the power pole charge, which so far has been an absolute breeze to install. Like super, super easy. But guys, we're basically done. We're going to plug it in here in a second see how it works. All right. Moment of truth, fellas. Let's see what happens. Oh, yes. Amber. It's lit up amber. That means it is charging. So the other thing that's really cool is they have an app for the power poles and the power pole charge. So basically you can log on here, you can set a few things, you can control your power poles. There's lots of cool things you can do within this app. So that's available on Android and iPhones. So just be sure to download this. Real simple to use. That was pretty simple to install. I have to say I'm super excited about using it and I don't have to carry around a separate charger for my lithium batteries anymore. So that makes life very, very simple. And having the ability to be able to jump and plus I have a secondary battery anyways, I feel like this is super good for tournament fishing. And again, it was super easy to install. And uh, so you gotta check it out, guys. So now you know what time it is now? We're, we're pretty much done doing this. Now it's time to get into the questions. Let's, uh, let's go in my office. Sit down a little bit, relax, okay? Answer a few of y'all's questions. All right, so we were gonna go to the office, but you know what? I sat here for a minute and I'm like, nah, this actually feels pretty good. It was cold this morning. It's finally warming up, but that's Florida. You know, you, you, you get cold in the morning and you get hot in the afternoons. But power pole charge is done. And at the beginning of this video, I told you that I was gonna answer a few fan questions. And so what we did is I actually posted on my Instagram uh, just about an hour ago, 
and said, hey, drop me some questions. So we had an amazing response. So I can't answer everyone's because it was like literally a couple hundred or more. So thank you so much for everyone that actually sent a question in. So I really appreciate it. I actually am reading through all of them. And I did pick a few here. So first one, it's a great question, by the way. It is by this gentleman named Bryce underscore DeMariano. DeMario. I might have butchered that. But his question is a great one. When you are going to a new lake to fish a tournament, how do you get prepared to find fish? That is like the hardest thing, right? I mean, when you go, like we travel, and I'm going to go to Louisville Lake in a, in a few weeks out in Texas, one of the very first times I ever fished there, how am I going to, how am I going to find fish on that lake? Well, first of all, uh, for me, I spend a lot of time on Google Maps, Google Earth. I look at satellite imagery. I see what the lakes look like. I want to spend time seeing what, you know, different years, what the water levels were. Is the lake, you know, just get a good idea of what the lake looks like. Secondly, when I get there, I want to try to break the lake down into two or three zones or maybe four zones, depending on how that lake's set up. You know, there might be like a lot of times you go to these lakes and they're like, oh, you know, up the river, you can win up the river or, oh, you can win down by the dam. So those are kind of like one whole day of practice, one whole day of practice down by the dam. So I kind of break it up in sections. The first day though, I really kind of go out. I put a lot of rods on the deck of my boat and I just really want to get comfortable. So I ride around, look at everything, fish a little bit. I fish the off the wall stuff. And I, you know, throughout practice, I'm kind of experimenting a lot. I eliminate water as well. You know, I don't want to catch fish every single place I go because if you do that, where are you going to end up going to fish? Because if you're catching them everywhere you go, that means everyone else is catching them everywhere they go. So I want to eliminate water so I can hone in on those special places that I'm going to spend a lot of time in in the tournament. So that's how I practice. It's a little maybe untraditional, but I like to eliminate water. I like to break the leg down in a couple sections and I like to divide my time up accordingly to the weather. Pay attention to the weather. Don't go to the north end of the lake on a south wind day and don't go to the south end on a north wind day. Pick your days properly. All right, next question. It's a great one from Kyle72 Cubic. He says, with my experience on Lake St. Clair up in Michigan, great smallmouth fishery, what are the key things to look for to smoke the smallies? All right, so I love catching big smallmouth on Lake St. Clair. And for me, I mean, that lake, it's, it's a natural lake like Okeechobee, it's round. It, it looks similar to Okeechobee. Obviously, it's not the same. I mean, it's a big smallmouth and everything else. But for me, when I go to Lake St. Clair, number one is I want to find water clarity. And number two, I want to find bait fish. Whether it's the, the perch, whether it's the alewives, I want to find bait fish and a little bit of grass. Not a lot of grass, but a little bit of grass. If you find bait in clear water around a little bit of grass, you're going to find those big smallmouth. So bait-wise, Look, if it's a lot of gobies and a lot of things like that, then perch on the bottom, I'm throwing drop shots, I'm throwing uh, uh, tubes. If I'm fishing around a lot of alewives, I'm gonna be throwing a lot of spinner baits, crank baits, and jerk baits. Kind of mix it up a little bit, move around, use the panoptics as much as you can, and just look for bait. Harrison G. Taylor, pretty simple question. How long have I been fishing? Well, I make the joke, guys, that I was born in a bass boat. Now, I was not literally born in a bass boat, but literally, I used to have a playpen in the bottom of my parents' boat. And so when they went fishing, I literally was in a playpen like right here. It's kind of crazy, huh? So, so th they say I caught an eight pounder when I was two years old. So I would say I've been fishing since I was two, like legit two. All right, Dakota, 1953. That's right. His question's real simple. Am I gonna do another video playing fishing sim? Yes, I am actually. And so I wanna play against some of you guys. So we're gonna get that going again. We've played several online games. I got beat by Brandon, which was uncomfortable, but nevertheless, we got some more of that stuff coming your way. Nathan Burkhammer, great question. What line do I use when I'm flipping? Well, that just, just depends, right? Here on Okeechobee, if I'm flipping, I'm flipping braid. Straight, 65 pound P-Line X braid. That's all I flip. Uh, if I am fishing, uh, you know, open water, clear water, not in Florida, I'll flip 20 pound P-Line Tactical, which is the fluorocarbon. So basically, I'm either have a rod rig that was 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon, you know, Lake Lanier, places like that, you know, non-braid spots. Or here in Florida, strictly braid, fellas. But bo Bowie Cheese, bo Bowie, Bowie Cheese? Bo I, okay, I don't know. I don't know. But thank you for the question, my friend. It's pretty simple. What does it take to be a professional fisherman? Like a lot. It takes a lot to be a professional fisherman. I mean, that's such a dynamic question, but a great one. 
But for the most part, you have to be versatile. You have to be creative. You have to be able to get up early in the mornings every single day of the week. You gotta be able to fish late. You gotta be able to deal with weather conditions. And you have to be pretty smart out there on the water. So here's another one, guys. 414 NL. I don't know. I don't know. I don't make these names up, man. Okay, so this, this guy here is actually literally at the marina down the street right now. He says, hey, you helped me and my cousins out with some fishing tips back in October. So a lot of times when I see people down at the marina, I tell them where to go fishing and try to make their experience a lot better. And uh, so they stay at the marina back in October. They said, we're back. They're actually eating lunch at the Tiki Bar right now, which is kind of cool. And they wanted to know where they should go after lunch, okay? So here's where you should go, guys. Now the problem is, if I tell you on this camera, then you're not gonna see this for like a couple days and then it's already messed up. So I'm gonna have to like respond back to you right now. So here's what you should do. Today with the wind blowing as hard as it is, you need to run down and fish Uncle Joe's Canal and fish some of the places in the Rim Canal with spinner baits and square bill crankbaits and take advantage of the wind blowing up on those rocks. That's a great place to get out of the wind, a lot of current in that canal find any places like around those pump stations, around little cuts in the bank, places that create little eddies. On Lake Ucho, you can catch big bags of fish this time of the year in the Rim Canal. So that's where you need to go try it. All right, so now I gotta type it to him. Channing, Channing, bruised head. Channing, bruised head. Okay, so here's the question. What is your go-to rod? Let me tell you, my go-to rod right now is a 7.3 Favorite Heavy Rush Series. It's, it's an unbelievable rod. Uh, never had any issues at all with fish breaking it, any mechanical issues. Very balanced, very light. I caught a lot of my fish last year on it. I caught the, that big one in, uh, at Kissimmee. That, those two actually caught both, those, both nine pounders the same day in the pads with that rod. Rod's great, 7.3 Heavy Rush, check it out you will not be disappointed at all. Yep. All right, perfect, perfect. I just responded back to 414NO. Look, he put, cool man, headed there now. So we just actually helped him out. He's heading that way. Hopefully you catch a couple big ones, dude. All right, let's find another one. All right, so one of the last questions here, Klasky 10 and uh, kind of a different question, and I'm not real sure how to answer it quite yet, but it's coming to me. How do you avoid toothy critters from stealing your bass lures without messing up your presentation? Steel leaders or thick mono? You know, look, here's the deal. If you're gonna completely change the presentation of the lure with steel leader or thick mono, which most likely is gonna happen, you're not gonna catch that many bass anyways. So it just kinda goes with the territory a little bit. You know, I do a lot of fishing up north and we deal with pikes, we deal with musky, we deal with pickerel down here in the south, and that does happen quite a bit. But unfortunately, it's just one of those things you're gonna have to just deal with it a little bit, and you're gonna have to lose a few. Because again, if you go to steel leaders and super heavy mono, you're just really gonna cut down your ability to catch fish, because at the end of the day, those baits work best on regular kind of line, right? Whether it's fluorocarbon or mono, not steel leader, not 30 pound test. So just gonna have to figure it out, deal with it a little bit, but that's the best answer I got for you. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out in this little video. Uh, main purpose of this video was to show you how easy it is to install the power pole charge, and I needed to install it myself anyways, and I wanted to have you guys join me on this little journey. So second thing is, I'm glad I got to answer some of your questions, and if I missed yours, I apologize. Thank you so much for all the support, guys, and we will see you soon. That's right, very soon. Boom! <laughs>